Welcome back to Julia, Among the Stars. Let's continue exploring the planet of Ambrosia. It looks like a head. Do you think it's inspired by our expedition? It might well be. The spherical part contains some sort of a funnel. A funnel? What for? You use funnels to pour liquid substances without spilling them. Very funny. Another observation. A strange contraption is hidden at the back of the spherical part. It looks like this statue has more to it than meets the eye. You know, it occurs to me. I've been asleep for about 60 years, right? So whatever happened here when our expedition came to explore Ambrosia happened a very long time ago. Now, I don't know how long these creatures live, but this could potentially be something that happened generations ago. Perhaps their ancestors told tales of the time the aliens came to visit them and, and shot them. And maybe, <laughs> who knows, maybe they've lived in fear of, of us ever since. That's a disturbing thought, isn't it? What on earth? It's a standard issue laser gun. What's it doing here? The sad thing is, to the local inhabitants, this weapon would be proof of godly powers. It is probably a holy relic to them. It's scary to see such a common item depicted like that. It must have taken them a long time. So they actually painted the laser gun. God, I wonder what we've done to them. I am not sure I can get you any more information about this funnel. Is there anything specific you want me to do with it? Not really. So it looks like I can approach it, but uh, before that, let's take a look at everything else around here. Observation. These vines are not growing naturally. Really? How so? They are tied around the trees to create some sort of nets. Nets? Mm, no, that doesn't sound right. They're too thick to catch anything. There must be a reason for those. Let it be, Rachel. We should move on. Sidewalk? What do you mean? Not a real sidewalk, of course, but it must be a walkway. They actually walk on these vines. Hmm. That would make sense. Also, did Julia just seriously tell me to let it be? I feel like she's trying to push me away from stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she has ulterior mo motives. And doesn't want me to know certain stuff. I'm very, very, very suspicious of her. What an interesting plant. The rolled up part might tell me more about their reproductive process. I've already seen some of these plants straightened out. I believe that at a certain point, the plant simply shoots out its seeds, like a slingshot. Let us validate this with our analyzer. An annual plant which ends its life cycle by committing a suicide. At the end, the flower ejects all its seeds, tearing apart tissues critical for the further plant growth and life. So when it kills itself, it just spreads the seeds everywhere. Goes out in a blaze of glory. They are so beautiful. Mobot, could you inspect the source of their glow? Just a second. It seems that the glow is not actually caused by the plants themselves. What do you mean? They are covered by a thin membrane formed from little life forms. It is the life forms that are glowing. Wow. So here we are, far away from Earth, witnessing a symbiosis between plant eye and metazoa. Mobot, you'd be so kind and get me a sample. The flower shows a perfect symbiosis of flora and insect-like life forms, which forms the thin membrane, creating a characteristic glow. The insects are feeding upon the blossom, and their excretions serve as a nutrient for the plant.
fantastic shape. What is this supposed to represent? It almost looks like the local creatures. It's a part of this artificial structure. There are two of these statues, one on each side. It doesn't look like that Ambrosian we just met. Maybe it's an object of worship. If so, we should be more careful not to meet one. Oh, we can go inside, can we? There's nothing in here. Any clue what the purpose of that strange cavity is? Maybe the locals use it to hide when it's raining. I don't think so. It's not very... I guess you'll never understand sarcasm, Mobot. All right, let's take a look at this contraption. Ah, those are the symbols that they used to communicate. All right, so these have two states. Looks like you can only have one up at one time. Hmm. I don't think I have enough information to solve this at the moment. Mobot, can you look closer at the scratch marks? They look like an inscription to me. You're right, Rachel. It seems that these marks once corresponded to the symbols on this object. I confirm your observations. I might be able to recover some of them. That would be wonderful. Let me try recovering the inscription. System restore. Ah. Based upon my new language data files, the inscription can be translated as flow with me to understand your past. Interesting. Based upon my flow with me to understand your past. Flow with me. I feel like opening these allows some sort of liquid inside. Nothing happened. Damn. So these seem kind of bluish. I don't know if that's just a trick of the light or if there's actually, like, liquid behind it. But flow with me to understand your past. And these look like pipes. And it looks like these open up the pipes. And you can see there's, like, bits of uh, purple all around, which I'm pretty sure means that's the liquid that leaked out. And there's even some kind of barely visible symbols here on the very, very left that looks like flows of, of liquid. Like streams. know how that's supposed to work, though. Let's make sure I'm not missing something I can click on. Nothing happened. Damn. Alright, what is this? Yep. Click on stones to control the contraption. Might have enough info to solve this at the moment. Might not. I feel like, I feel like something should be flowing when I open these. Like I need to actually make the flow happen. I probably need a liquid to put in here. I mean, it is a funnel, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I need a liquid. Hmm. So something... purple... ish. Actually kind of looks like the color of this stuff. I wonder if there's any relation. The color of the... Life forms on the plant. Interaction. Right. The life form is approaching. Oh, hello. You have discovered the artifact of power. This was left here by our masters to remind us about our inferiority. A single ray from this artifact returned many of our kind to the ancient Zir. The being made a strange sound as it stretched its neck to an incredible length. Who would expect such remarkable flexibility? But the gesture conveyed some deep sadness, as though he mourned the loss of his fellow beings. I'm speechless. Our own paranoia, weakness, and aggression made us seem superior to these poor beings. You shouldn't be so surprised, Rachel. 
Isn't that the human way of dealing with things they don't understand? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, let's go somewhere new. Hold on, these... Yeah, I just realized blocks keep lighting up. In the same place? I wonder if that's random or if it indicates... No, I think it's just random. I was thinking maybe it indicates where a... You know, a key point is... But no, I don't think so. Is this their homes? That's gotta be where they live. Observation. The inside of the cocoon is an elaborate construction which is probably capable of limited motion. Motion? What kind of motion? I would suggest that they can somehow pull the whole cocoon way up to the tree trunks, making the whole cocoon invisible. In addition to that, the cocoon can be sealed to create a rather compact and impenetrable construction. Clever. The blossoms, they're so beautiful. I wish I knew if they also smell nice. I apologize, but I was never equipped with scent receptors. It's all right, Mobot. Don't worry about that. I will get you a sample. The plant is carnivorous. Traces of, I of digested insects can be found inside the blossom. The flower probably attracts insects with its glow, combined with a strong aromatic scent, and traps its prey in an internal pouch filled with a sticky substance. Traces of organic material confirm our preliminary finding. The local life forms built these walkways to quickly travel between various places in this jungle. How do you use them? Are they somehow tightrope walking? I would need to see this, but it seems that they might also be sliding. Let's see about that. An extremely strong and sturdy vine-like organic structure. Upon additional analysis, it has been treated with specific chemicals to reinforce its strength. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess if you're going to use them as your pathways, you might as well make them... Well, strong and make them suit your purpose. You know, just like we do with roads. Except roads aren't things that already exist. We have to kind of make them, but, you know similar kind of idea. Although they do seem to be growing unnaturally, so perhaps they are actually more like roads than I initially thought. Although I don't know how you'd control their growth like that. Perhaps they've just simply, maybe their growth has simply been directed. These look like berries. That's an interesting idea, Rachel. Mobot. Can you have a closer look at them? Hypothesis. The berries serve as food to the local inhabitants. Why do you think so? There are leftover stems of various sizes which have clear signs of picked or bitten berries. Couldn't it be that they just fell down? Negative. The ground doesn't show any sign of that. I will obtain a test section. Those things are huge. They're really, really large. Serving as food for... Herbivorous? You know, I just really... We normally say herb. Although some people say herb. But when you turn into like a full word like that... Should, should you pronounce the H? Herbivorous? I don't know. I'm gonna pronounce it. It just... It sounds better. Uh, serving as food for herbivorous alien life forms. This fruit would be highly poisonous for people. With a high level of cyanide-based compounds, 
It says interesting things about the wildly divergent digestive systems of aliens on Ambrosia. <laughs> it's got lots of cyanide in it. Yeah, let's avoid that. Huh. Apparently they can handle it. Observation. The cocoon is not a natural construction. So this is where they live? I wish I had the chance to really research these beings. To actually do some proper science for a change. That's where they live? I had no idea. Thank you, Mobot. I keep glancing here, even though I probably don't need to, just in case there's something that I need to see or can interact with or something like that. Another one of these. Another swirling hole. I apologize. Another of those obelisks. I wonder what purpose they serve. Rachel, look carefully at those bonding plants. Why? Aren't those the same we've seen in the jungle? Look carefully. They're actually part of one huge plant. Do you think the whole forest is actually intertwined by one single organism? We don't have enough data to tell, but it would surely differentiate Ambrosia from Earth, don't you think? So let's get some more data now. It would differentiate Ambrosia from Earth? What, what does that have to do with anything? Regardless of what it would do, that doesn't change what is. I don't understand why she'd mention that. Bonding plant. I love you, bonding plant. The bonding plant is part of an incredibly large and complex network of stems and leaves. Based upon rough estimates, such a plant can spread across kilometers of the ambrosia surface, sharing just one common root. If this analysis is correct, the root would have to be enormous to support this intricate organism. That's true, yeah, if you have one root, I mean, the root is where... Uh, the root is going to suck up nutrients from the ground. So if you have a massive amount of, of matter that needs to be supported, all coming from one root, then that one root has to be large enough to take in enough nutrients to support it. It'd be quite difficult. Hold on, there's something here. Huh, it's a dead end. And a third one. Another of those obelisks. I wonder what purpose they serve. This tree is gigantic. My approximation is that the tree is around one kilometer tall. That's almost ten times more than the tallest tree on Earth. It looks like it swallowed the obelisk and feeds on the swirling energy. I think you're letting your imagination run wild, Rachel. Maybe, but I still want to have a sample. Biological analysis reveals strong genetic mutation caused by an unknown external force. Noteworthy aspect of this mutation is the enormous size coupled with enhanced longevity. Right, so it is feeding off of the obelisk. Okay, uh, where have I not been? So I've explored all of this dead end, dead end. Oh, 
Mobot is in front of a huge lake filled with a purple liquid. Ooh, purple liquid. There's no sign of life, not even a sound, apart from the soft hum of Mobot's engine. What a weird place. Indeed. It doesn't belong here at all. So is this the strange man-made... Well, I keep saying man-made, that's <laughs> not even remotely accurate. The strange, artificially made uh, mark on the planet. And this is also the liquid that apparently goes into that funnel. Mobot, can you tell me more about this liquid? This liquid is a highly corrosive substance. I warn you against further analysis without taking protective measures as it could damage my functionality. No need to do that. I guess we know enough. What? No, I need it. Do I need an upgrade or something? Also, I was thinking maybe it'd be a gigantic lake of Pepto-Bismol. But alas, it is not. Obviously, nothing could survive in the neighborhood of this weird purple poison. I wonder what really happened here. This liquid... Attention, I've detected that creature in my proximity again. Hello? This lake is a sad chapter in our history. This purple lake, as you call it, is our doom. How do you mean? The lake was originally filled with the holy essence of life. But the lords punished us and filled it with the purple liquid, which slowly drains life from us and our home. That is strange. The crew couldn't possibly have done it. Moreover, this substance would be deadly for our probe as well. Yeah, so we didn't leave it. They think the gods have punished them. So it's something that just happened, but how? It wasn't from us, was it? Okay, um, I still continue to need upgrades for pretty much anything I want to do. I need upgrades for, uh, the liquid, for interacting with it, and I also need upgrades just to look at the obelisks and the swirling pools of... stuff. Alright, where have I not been, where have I been? I think, uh, next place to go is probably here. Alright, that links back up at the beginning. the other side of the lake. This liquid is Obviously nothing could survive in the neighborhood of this weird purple poison. I wonder what really happened here. So it wasn't a coincidence. They did actually build these things. More paintings. I wonder if these paintings also have to do with us. These look like people, actually. Maybe? It looks like a relic from the expedition. This machete must have been used by the crew to get through the jungle. And now the inhabitants worship it as a relic. That's sad. Either that, or it is here to remind them of the past. This one even looks more like a head. I agree. It is probably influenced by the overall shape of this construction as well. The spherical part again contains a funnel. I presume that all the funnels serve the same purpose. We just have to find out what it is. It looks like this statue has more to it than meets the eye. Confirmation. Another strange contraption is hidden on the back of the upper part. Okay, probably the same thing. Needs a liquid. Just uh, probably a different sentence back there. 
I am not sure I can get you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mobot, can you look closer at the scratch marks? They look like an inscription to me. You are right, Rachel. It seems that I confirm your observations. Let me try. Based upon my new le avoid me to learn about your future. Hmm. Nothing happened. Damn. Yeah, this one also does not seem to do anything. Obviously need to put something in the funnel. Pretty sure you need to put something in the funnel. Another one of those carvings. Indeed. Have you noticed the anthropomorphic shape of this one? I did, and it makes me wonder if they tried to depict us going through the jungle. Hang on a second, Mobot. This tree looks different. Do you want me to scan it? Please do. It seems that it's sprouting from the spherical element at the bottom. Additionally, the spherical part is full of something which resembles dead vines. Dead vines? Hmm. Are the other trees like that as well? It would seem so. Let's validate your claim. This tree serves as a prime example in support of the survival of the fittest theory. At first, only the bottom part grows, filled with various vines. Those vines compete, and the strongest becomes the... bow? Effectively killing off the rest. Huh. Interesting. It gives them the appearance of all being just raised off the ground. Almost as if somebody kind of dug around them. And that's just a little bit of earth that they're left clinging to. Warning. This place is built upon an incredibly deep gorge. Can you estimate how deep it is? I do apologize, but my current equipment doesn't allow for such a measurement. I could fly down to check, though. No need to do that. I don't think it's vital for our mission anyway. Caution, I am being approached again. So you saw the artifact of the faith. We still don't understand its true meaning, but we know it was really important to our masters. We believe it's here to test our faith. But it's just a simple broken machete. Can't we tell them that? They wouldn't listen, Rachel. This is how myths are usually created, and by trying to explain them rationally, we would only lose their trust. I see that you are indeed interested in our kind. Meet me at our settlement, and we will talk more. Okay. Before I do that, though, I... I do want to finish exploring everything, because I think I've almost finished everything. Yet another one. Another. Man, look at that view. You can't see much of it, because most of it's obstructed by the rock, but still. Whew. I'd love to look down there. Uh, what was that? What was my other goal? Does it show me the ones I've already completed? Oh yeah, I think we found all the important places. Okay. Not quite done yet, though. Let's see where this goes. Okay, yeah. Looks like that's all of them. Just take a quick look through here, make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, so their home is... Right here. 
Hello, I see you in there. The being is looking at Mobok cautiously. Obviously, we haven't earned its trust yet. Would you expect anything else? Select topic. Well, there's only one to really talk about. Environment. Uh, let's see. Yeah, tell me about the lake. Essence of our doom, our punishment. Again, all this talk about punishment. I guess it wasn't always in this purplish condition then. If you want to understand our punishments, I can reveal to you an important part of our history. Okay, uh... Did you want to tell me the important part of your history right now, or no? Also, I noticed the, the noises that they make are very strange, and they sound like a mixture of a bunch of different animal sounds. The most obvious one I keep hearing is the sound of like a, a hawk or something like that, screeching. Also sounds kind of like something, maybe an elephant, like blowing out its trunk, or something like that. A bunch of other weird noises, too. Will this just talk about the topic again? Again? Yep. Alright, uh, Secret of the Two Altars. On both of the two altars we've seen, there seems to be an intricate mechanism mounted. Do they have a known purpose, or is it something long forgotten? The Pillars of Memories. They were built by an old branch. It's told that these creations prevent artifacts from being obtained. It's told, so you don't know for certain? No. We only have our stories and legends. But it's only been a couple of years. How could they have forgotten so quickly? Maybe they have an extremely short lifespan. Those artifacts are part of our legends, and it's been told that the one who obtains them restores faith and a better future. Yeah, as if a broken laser gun and rusty machete could do that. They won't, but your intervention could help us gain their trust. I've come across a strange obelisk emanating some kind of unknown power. The Obelisk of Enlightenment? What a name. They have been erected by... Ith? As part of our pilgrimage of enlightenment. We should find out more about this Ith fellow. I wonder if he's real, or just local folklore. I agree. Without further evidence, we should classify him among their legends. And apparently that's it. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> it seems we've opened quite a bit more. Alright, let's talk about their history. <laughs> history lesson. Give me a history lesson. I'll take notes. All right, I am here for your history class. What is a class? Forget it. Tell us about your history. Our past is plagued by a darkness into which we've been cast for a long time. While we've now learned the way of modesty, we were not always this way. We were proud and skilled rulers of this. Hypothesis. Uh, by Biaf, he probably means the Salia solar system. We... Okay, you, you can cool it with the hawk sounds, okay? Thank you. Uh, we built our settlements. Ah, uh, settle, uh, I missed it. However, the masters arrived and we were taught a lesson in the form of three punishments. Now this is interesting. In theory, they might have sent the signal we intercepted on Earth. You let your imagination run too wild, Rachel. Still, I'm curious to learn more about those punishments. Julia, do you hate me finding information? Like, do you not want me to use my brain? Dear God, Julia, just shut up and let me do my thing. He's always, like, talking down to me. Do let your imagination run wild. No, that actually sounds fairly reasonable. Especially given how little we actually know. Just dismissing it outright is... Silly. 
All right, what did he say oh, that no. I missed? Forget it. Hypothesis. We built our settlement in a place far away from here and proudly sought to expand in the vast blackness of stars. Now this is in Okay. You let your still I'm Tell me about your punishments. We keep the first punishment close to our hearts. It was back when we were proud and strong. We thought to rule the universe, but then the ancient lords came. They destroyed our settlements and everything we had invented. Only a handful of the obedient were transported to this world. We were warned that everything would be destroyed if we remained so proud. Do you have any memories of the world you once lived on? No. All that remains is this tale. After some time, we once again grew proud and built our home around the sacred essence. Our luck didn't last as we forgot to do, the, to do the bidding of our masters. One night, there was a flash of light in the sky. The next day, our essence of life turned into an essence of doom. Many of us died trying to repair it. Then Ith, the prophet, performed an ancient rite and was taken away by the masters. To me that sounds as if the acid in the lake was a product of an accident, but maybe we should learn more about this mythical Ith. Yeah, so there's a flash in the sky and then suddenly it just turned to... into acid. Huh. After Ith returned to us, we lived for many turns in happiness. Clarification. Turns likely means full revolutions around their sun. Mm -hmm. or Even if the essence meant our peril, Ith brought us hope. His death, however, led to many branches forgetting the old ways. It was many turns ago when the masters came. The one who bore the title of... Unintelligible, apparently. Before me, saw them descend from the sky with his very own eyes. Unfortunately, he didn't face them as a brave one like the others. And he survived. His big shame, which fell over the whole. I presume he refers to some title of hierarchy within their community. I don't have enough data to provide further analysis. So this visit corresponds with the arrival of our probe at this planet. Ask him what the masters looked like. They were tall beings of light. With four limbs, they walked slowly and majestically through our home. We went to greet them, but the masters were offended and destroyed all that were unholy. Ask him if, if, if anyone survived. Apart from the one who bore the title of something, nobody survived. It was a big shame to us that he hid himself instead of accepting the punishment. If he did, though, we would never hear the story of what happened. Maybe our masters have now come to teach us what happened. This would give our branch new meaning. The creature brightened and rapidly changed color. You could tell this was a sign of great emotion, perhaps even happiness. Analysis. They probably organized themselves in some sort of families that they refer to as branches. If an individual commits some serious wrong, their entire branch bears the blame. I became the watcher of the skies, learning the ways of the ancients, obediently listening and learning all the knowledge hidden in our memories. I wanted to become a worthy greeter of the masters if they ever decided to return. So that's why you asked me not to hurt you? At first, I thought you were one of our masters who had returned, but you look very different from the tales we share. I was afraid that we have to face the fourth and final punishment. Now the only remaining hope is the ancient prophecy brought to us by Ith. All right, who is this Ith? Ith, the great prophet, traveled to the edge of the known space to the place in the mist. What on earth is this place in the mist? High above the third plane of existence lies a place, hidden in the eternal mist. There lives one of the ancient gods who knows the answers to all things which have been and will be. Ith learned the ways of calming down the lords, and centuries of peace followed. Ith, however, 
and disappeared into solitude. He would be seen here and there, erecting large structures from rock. Later on, we've discovered that during his time of solitude, he created for us a pilgrimage of enlightenment to revere and follow. What happened to Ith? He was worshipped till the end of his life. Tell me about the Pilgrimage of Enlightenment. When Ith returned from his solitude, he gave us four empty parchments. These were very common to our kind, so we did not see their value. Do you still have the items? Of course we have them, but let me continue. He handed these parchments to our leader and told him that the Pilgrimage of Enlightenment was ready. He refused to tell us any more, so we let the parchments sleep. Much time passed after Ith's death, and we forgot about the parchments. The whole story became nothing more than a fable for our young ones. When we were punished, we sought ways to change our fate. That was when the fable of Ith's journey was spoken again. It became our rite of passage from young one to grown, that all must take the journey of Ith. They would be handed the parchments, and spend many days alone. Then they must travel to each place that Ith visited, and meditate on their meaning, in hope of enlightenment. The one who returns, knowing the true meaning of Ith's pilgrimage, would become our next leader. Many tried, yet none succeeded. So what if we wanted to make that pilgrimage? It's just a waste of time, Rachel. Time we don't have. We can make the time for this. You are too trusting, Rachel. And you are just a paranoid computer. He seems pleased with us. Allow me to entrust you with the most sacred scrolls given to our kind upon the most important day of our lives. The parchments. Now go and seek the sacred places to meditate upon our ways. May you return with answers to the sacred pilgrimage. Thank you very much. And yeah, what do you mean we don't have time, Julia? I've been asleep for 60 years. I've been asleep for 60 years! I'm not gonna die anytime soon, unless we're... I'm getting horrible radiation inside of the probe, which wouldn't surprise me all that much. She's obviously trying to make me just leave. She doesn't want me to dig deep for some reason. And I want to know exactly why. Alright, tell me about the prophecy. As you've learned, we lost our essence of all life. Without it, the last of our kind will die, and we will be no more forever. The essence of life turned into the essence of punishment, yet Ith brought back a prophecy from the place in the mist. According to the prophecy, a wanderer from the sky will restore our essence of life reverting the punishment. Hidden somewhere in this... something <laughs> lies a place where the essence can be discovered and understood in its intact form. Observation. He drew a solitary symbol for this so-called essence. We should copy the symbol. You never know. Maybe we can help them. Artifacts. We'll try obtaining the artifacts for you. The being looks at you with all of its... all of his eyes wide open and suddenly changes color. This could only mean one thing. He is in awe. If you've indeed decided to obtain the artifacts, I have to warn you. It's said that such a deed can be perilous. Please explain. I need to evaluate associated risks. Our teaching says that the contraption comes alive only when you pour the essence of punishment inside. I have a feeling he's referring to the corrosive liquid. Ask him about it. Is the purple liquid your essence of punishment? Indeed it is, and you shall not touch it unless you've been entrusted with... What's that? Ugh. The creature emerges with a purplish container. Handing it to Mobot, it nods to signify that he should take it. Oh, I don't need an upgrade for it. If you are the one destined to free those artifacts, bring them to me. I will reward you with an artifact of wisdom. 
an artifact of wisdom. In other words, knowledge, I think. Okay, I believe that's everything. History, yep. Mythology, yep. Okay. Farewell, creature. Alright, let's go get a sample. This liquid is a highly corrupt. Um. Oh, I probably need to examine it first, I guess. Unbelievable. This container is actually indestructible. I wish we could have taken this to Earth. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I don't think there's anything that's literally indestructible, is there? A spectral analysis of the sample has revealed some outstanding properties. Based upon those findings, it's safe to say that this container is practically indestructible. Okay, practically indestructible, that's fair enough. The material doesn't react to any available chemical substance, including the most potent acids. Hmm. Can you even read the writing on these anymore? Assuming there even was writing. Peculiar light sensitivity. Interesting. Chemical analysis of the small scroll sample reveals an interesting photosensitive quality similar to that of old photographic film. Uh... So you're saying they need to be... developed? Okay. How would I develop... scrolls on an alien planet? Is there a dark room anywhere nearby? Maybe that's what the hole in that thing was for. A dark room? That seems far-fetched. Here we go. The container is indestructible, right? Mobot, fill it with this corrosive liquid to see if it can hold up. As you wish, Rachel. The container seems to be intact. So, the spectral analysis didn't lie. Why would it lie? It's not like there's anything weird about the sensors. No, I mean, the sensors have been incredibly reliable. I mean, just look what happened to the rest of our crew. Yeah, this is the hole I was talking about. That seems very doubtful. I... No, that doesn't make any sense. That, I mean, that you would develop... Develop <laughs> the parchment there. How do you... Developing parchment just sounds so ridiculous. <sighs> Alright, so any special light I should perhaps consider for the parchment? What about the obelisks? If our Ambrosian was right and this scroll has anything in common with the obelisk, we might try exposing it to that strange swirl. And how am I supposed to do that? Maybe you could make it into a plane and see if it would fly inside. <laughs> Not helpful, Julia. I think we are just wasting our time. Let's just see what happens. Wait, so Julia chides me about wasting time and stuff. And then she goes on and cracks a joke, which wastes our time. Okay. Expose pergamon to the swirl. What's a pergamon? I don't know. Try holding the scroll so the swirling energy goes directly on the scroll. I think I understand what you mean. And... Nothing happens. Shut up. Let's wait a bit longer. We're just wasting time. Nothing will ever... Something is happening. The swirl has created a visual pattern on the scroll. Yes. We need to do the same with each obelisk. Okay. I'm guessing we need to expose it to every single one in that... Once everything's exposed, that'll create some final image that's actually useful. Let's go put the liquid in here. I've poured part of the container into the funnel. Okay, so now this should work, right? I suppose I should fill these back in. Um, I still don't see anything happening. Oh, there we go.
Okay, so you pull that, fills up. And then obviously it's not correct, so... Alright, so you have to get everything set correctly and then pull this button. Okay, cool. Interesting. I wonder if that'll just, like, continue on down here. For some reason, nothing is happening. Hmm. Oh, wait, whoops. Ah, I do see the pipes connecting them. So, if I open up this, would that allow these three to fill? Yes, okay. I think I get the idea here. Um, I wonder if you have to do all this at once, or if you can do it in stages. Yes, so let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's only 6 uh, columns of these. So, let's see. I probably just need to fill it up so that all of these symbols up here are filled up here. Is what I'm guessing? So, for example, I would start here. And then I would unblock like this. Yeah, so, yeah I think it's something like this. See? So that the, uh, the first symbol is what's up here. And the second symbol is the one up here. So yeah, I think I just need to unblock it in such a way that the liquid fills only the symbols up here. Okay, that shouldn't be too hard, I think. But I'm going to save that for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.